We made it another weekend. I think that's like 20 weekends now in a row, but my name's George Gary, and I'd like to welcome you into my kitchen. And I don't have any morning shows across the country this, this week, so I've gotten some emails of people asking where I'll be. I've been all over the place, so I don't want you to think there's gonna be any this week. I don't think so, so far. I've got a radio show, another one this week somewhere. But besides teaching here in my own kitchen, I teach all over the country when we're allowed to travel. I live in the state of California, and they just locked us back down today. So, I'm locked in my house. <laughs> Not too bad. I feel like I've been locked in anyway. I haven't really done a whole lot. And uh, besides teaching, I also write books, and we'll talk about one of my books today. And I also uh, do food tours of Europe, and that's about it. I can't think of anything else I do. I do a lot of different things. And we also have, oh, a haircut. Thank goodness we got it because they closed them down today. Did you know that, Neil? I heard that. We did that. We got our haircut right before all this started, the day before. Because I thought, mm, better do it. They're thinking they're closing, and we didn't think things would close. But anyway, stay safe out there. Wear your mask. I don't care if you want to or not. Do it for somebody else. I know a number of people that have passed away, and I'm sick and tired of people saying they don't want their mask on. So, before I keep going into politics, which I'm going to try not to, we'd like to welcome Neil, our cameraman. You'll get to see his haircut on Friday. Because we're going to do Moscow Mules on Friday, which is one of Neil's favorite drinks. It's a full week of like some history this week. Today, we're going to talk about some salads from two historical places. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to New Orleans, and we're going to do some uh, pralines and bananas foster. Wednesday, we're going to do brownies, the first original brownie from Chicago. And uh, then we're going to do a brownie recipe from 1909, updated for today. And uh, Thursday, who knows what we're doing Thursday? Thursday, 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 Thursday. What am I doing Thursday, Neil? Look at the list. Thursday, you're Thursday. doing Lowry's California oh, we're going Center. Lowry's. Okay, yeah. We're going to Lowry's Mexican California lasagna kitchens. and black bean salad. That's in my, my book also. And the whole list of everything we're going to do is up. And uh, today, we're going to two historical places. One is, I look down because I don't want things to be wet, the Brown Derby. When I was working on my Hollywood book, I call it the Hollywood book, which is the L.A. Legendary Restaurant coffee table book that came out a few years ago. Everybody across the country was saying, are you going to have the Brown Derby? Are you going to have the Derby? And because they remember Lucy and the episode with the spaghetti. And, of course, I had the Brown Derby on the cover. I was really fortunate that my publisher put it on the cover. And the Brown Derby, the original one, opened up in 1926. And uh, there we have a picture of Lucy and Ricky. Uh, really, really, it's Desi, but we always think Lucy and uh, Desi. And um, we've got the whole story on the Brown Derby and the Cobb salad. The Cobb salad, people think that it looks exactly like they think it in their mind. It is a triangle mountain with the rows of the greens. We're going to teach you exactly how the Cobb salad was done. But uh, that is all about this book. And... The Brown Derby did close in 1985, and there were four in Southern California. Uh, one building is still there, but there was only one building that looked like this, the cover. And there is a reenactment type one in Walt Disney World that has a very, very limited menu. They have like five, six items, mostly when the Brown Derby had different specials every day. Now, I am fortunate to have an old antique cookbook from the Brown Derby, and this is from 19, and there's some old, old pictures in it too. And the specials and the different things in here. And this, let's see, I think this is 19, yeah, 47. And talks about all the different things in here. And that's where I got a lot of information for the book too. So there's my old cookbook. I have a collection of a, a bunch of old cookbooks. So you can find that book today reissued with new uh, paper and stuff. So what we're doing, like I said, is we're gonna be doing the um, salad and most people will say they want ranch dressing with it and that is not what was supposed to be on. You were supposed to have a French dressing that they made fresh. So we're going to do the fresh dr French dressing first in the food processor. They didn't use a food processor back then, but we're gonna do it a little easier. We've got red wine vinegar, water, Worcestershire sauce, 
Lemon juice, fresh. I put that in there. We have a little bit of granulated sugar, ground pepper, Dijon mustard, salt, garlic that I'm gonna cut a little bit. And we're using two oils. We're using olive and canola, half and half, because if you use all olive oil, it's a little too strong with flavor. And if you use all canola, you don't get the little olive oil flavor. So we're using about half and half. So what I'm gonna do is just smash first my garlic and just take, peel the outer edge to get about two of them. And these are gonna go all, uh, they're getting food processed, so I'm not really worried. And I'm looking to make sure I don't have any of the green stem inside. So this goes in our food processor. Around. And we've got, everything else goes in here except oils. So the sugar, the Worcestershire sauce, the lemon juice, the little bit of water. Now, back in the day, they didn't use a lot of fresh herbs, so you won't see fresh herbs in here. And, uh, which is fine, but it's just the way they ate. When I was researching this book, there were so many weird ingredients that we don't use today. We're gonna turn it on. And one was kind of celery salt. We don't really use celery salt much. I have it in my pantry and I use it when I'm cooking some of these recipes. But uh, well, a little bit more garlic in it, you can add more. But uh, I'm doing the exact recipe right now. Now the salad, when I do that, I'm gonna do it a little different and I'll explain when I do that. Now, the reason why I'm using a food processor, so my hand doesn't have to dribble. There is a little hole in Cuisinart's. And when I put all the oil in here, it's going to dribble it in here and emulsify it without me having to do it by hand. And it does it just fast enough. So all of our oil goes in there. And you'll start seeing it's dribbling perfectly. And it's going to finish up and then your salad dressing is done. I have a question. Well, first of all, it takes forever, it seems. Yep. Um, the French dressing I've always seen in the bottles is kind of pink or red. Is that, that's just because it's fake? <laughs> They're using the same red vinegar, but some, some they, they use different things in it. This one will be just a, a, the normal color of a light brown, a tan. And you can pick this up and see how, see, you know, just see how it's dribbling a little at a time. Cool. Now, if you want to do this by hand, you can, which you've seen me do some, but I do it a little quicker. You whisk it. And uh, this recipe makes about three cups. I cut the recipe in half because I don't need three cups for our salad. Also, the salad I've cut a little bit in half because it's only Neil and I eating the salad tonight and uh, it's dinner. And as soon as this is done, you might have a little bit left. Then off. And that is your dressing. It smells good. Woo. And we're going to put that in the bowl. But while I do that, I'm going to let you look at some pictures that I have of movie stars at the Brown Derby. So we'll be right back. Have a, take a look at those. So, those were some pictures of stars, and it was a fascinating place. You uh, didn't bother the stars there. People would go there to not get autographs. They'd really go there to eat, and uh, certain stars had certain nights they went all the time. They had certain booths they sat in. 
So it was similar to Chasen's was another one that was like that. We're gonna do the Cobb salad first. We did the salad dressing, or next, I mean. And what you have is today diners, restaurants do this salad quick and they just throw it at you. And really what it was, was his, it was a presentation. They would come to your table. First of all, all the greens would be already in here. So in here will be iceberg lettuce. Now I'm not using all of these because I only like the iceberg lettuce in romaine, but they'd have watercress, chicory, romaine, and iceberg. So all four lettuces were in here. And this would sit off to the side and then a platter like this with rows, which that's what I'm going to do. Tomato, uh, blue cheese, egg, chicken. They didn't use turkey. You'll see turkey sometimes. Avocado, which was very like, woo, avocado from California. And we'd have bacon. And they'd all be the same pieces in rows. And the waiter would come up and he would have this and he'd say, what would you like? Would you like this, this, this for the table? And he'd pull, if you didn't want avocado, he wouldn't put it in. Then they would table side dress it with the dressing and toss it and put the dressing on and everything would be tossed together. It wouldn't be like we see it, these mounds of lettuce with little strips of chicken and, and there's no cheese. Do you notice? There wasn't cheese back then. I mean, there was cheese back then. They didn't have cheese in this recipe. So anyway, I'm going to chop all this stuff up. So there is everything listed that was on a salad. So what we'll do, and I've got some chive here that goes up at the end, but doesn't that look nice? Yeah, the waiters had to work back then. And uh, we go to this one restaurant, the Del Rey, the Del Rey, and uh, right now they opened up for a little bit and they, uh, they were open for about three weeks and we went during the three weeks. And at that point, they were not allowed to do anything table side. That was part of the rules. So anyway, what we're gonna do is, we'll ask Neil, what do you want in your salad, sir? I think I would like everything. Everything, okay. Uh, and that's exactly what would happen. They would combine. This would already be there. They would put a little everything and they would fancy this plate back up the avocado, they would put in juice so it wouldn't brown. Just like that. I'm gonna put all the avocado in and all the blue cheese and all the egg. There we go. Yum, yum. And here's our dressing. Now my salad bowl is kind of small, but put the dressing in. Toss. I love the sound of crisp lettuce. And then they would serve it in all plates. So let me plate this up and we'll show you what it looks like. We'll be right back. Well, there was the first salad and we're gonna do, this is like meatless Monday. Well, we did have chicken, so I guess not meatless. And bacon. It? And bacon. Oh well. <laughs> ah, salad. <laughs> anyway, this is the Waldorf salad. And the Waldorf Astoria was technically two hotels separately, and then they merged into becoming the Waldorf Astoria in uh, 1931. Before that, Waldorf was 1893, and Astoria was 1897, is when they opened. Neither building is still there. In fact, the uh, Empire State Building is where the original hotel was. They had to tear it down so they could put a um, largest building in America at the time. Uh, the Waldorf Astoria is not open anymore. They're supposed to be reopened this year, who knows if they will, and they're turning it into condo living and 
then there is going to be a, a little a smaller boutique hotel connected but it's all registered and they can't do a whole lot with the lobby which is gorgeous and the outside has gold leafing it's really a, a remarkable building but back in the beginning of food times the first part of the century the executive chef he uh made a lot of things and supposedly they say they invented the red velvet cake which there's no real report that they did they invented this salad and they also invented brownies well the brownies are another hotel and we're going to talk about that on wednesday so we'll come back to brownies so waldorf salad i'm going to let them say that they made it it's apple celery mayonnaise carrots a little bit of lemon juice black and pe black pepper and salt with some raisins now my raisins, if they're too hard, you just soak them in a little bit of water and then you'll drain them. So there's that. And then our apples, we're using Granny Smith and Arome, and uh, maybe I'll use two Granny Smith. And then we've got our celery and our carrots. So we're going to put it together. Okay, so we've got the apple, and if you're going to do the apple ahead of time, you want to put it in some uh, citrus juice, a little carrot, and the celery. Now we have lemon juice and mayonnaise. My mom used to make something like this, but she put a little bit of sugar in hers, I believe. I have to ask her. Same way she made her coleslaw. And then we just blend this together. And then we're going to take the walnuts. Those are beautiful, aren't they? Got those at Trader Joe's. Then we're going to drain those. Raisins. Put those in. Now I do save a few walnuts out and a few raisins out because... I want to make sure I've got some on top of the salad. Just like that. Let me put this on here. Let me get a big spoon. And we'll dish it up. So this is your Waldorf salad that they served at the Waldorf Astoria. And see how I just want a few little on top and a few of the nuts like that. All right, so let me clear this off. We've got two salads tonight on Monday. We've got our Waldorf and our Cobb salad. There's Monday. Well, We'd like to thank you so much. Join us tomorrow when we talk about New Orleans pastry. And there's our salads. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye now.